I could be wrong, but there do seem to be more libertarians today, more people who care about the Constitution and about limits on government power. Why has this happened? Because of me, of course. I've ranted about this on TV for 20 years, and finally it's paid off. I've convinced more people. And there are more Republicans who lean libertarian because of me. Or maybe not. In the 2008 Republican primary, there was this one obscure Republican presidential candidate who, during a debate, was asked this. Are you suggesting we invited the 9-11 attack, sir? I'm, I'm suggesting that we listen to the people who attacked us and the reason they did it. And they are delighted that we're over there because Osama bin Laden has said, I am glad you're over on our sand because we can target you so much easier. They have already now, since that time, have killed 3,400 of our men, and I don't think it was necessary. Wendell, may I make a comment on that? That's really an extraordinary statement. That's an extraordinary statement as someone who lived through the attack of September 11 that we invited the attack because we were attacking Iraq. I don't think I've ever heard that before, and I've heard some pretty absurd explanations for September 11. Rudy Giuliani got the applause, but by 2012, it was Giuliani who was out of elective politics and Ron Paul getting massive crowds at rallies. <laughs> So, Congressman Paul, welcome, and I think you. you get the credit for bringing in more, especially young people. A little in, bit. <laughs> but these are huge. You got 2,000 people showing up at rallies? To the surprise of many, including myself, our largest rally was at Berkeley campuses, and we had 8,000 people came on. 8,000 yeah. people. So, uh, that, that is pleasing, but it is the message, because uh, people criticize me all the time. You know, Ron Paul, you're not a very good speaker, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. But the message is great. But I think what has happened is the absolute failure of our system is coming together. The failure of our foreign policy, the failure of our monetary system, the failure of our economic policy, and too much intrusion into our privacy. And people see it, they just hear the message of liberty, and they say, wow, that makes sense. And it's very attractive to the young people. It's very energizing for me. And when you started trying to explain these ideas to people, you were a lonely congressman you would vote no on bills, sometimes you'd be the only no vote, and your colleagues just thought you were this weird annoyance, a pesky yeah. bug. What's he talking about? There, there, there was a lot of that, and I never expected much to happen. So these last five years have been a bit of a surprise to me. You I got used to getting no respect. <laughs> but I thought that in time, maybe in 20 or 30 years, somebody might read, well, you know, maybe this check his voting. We're right. always optimistic. When I was doing this at CBS and then ABC and people would sneer at me, I got depressed about it. I, I never did. People ask me if I, uh, you know, got very frustrated, you know, because it didn't seem like I was getting anywhere in Washington. I said I never got frustrated because I had low expectations. <laughs> you know, I just didn't think I was going to change the world or change Washington. I wanted to change a few people's minds, as you have done on television for so long. But what, change people's minds if, is what's important. If, as Jefferson said, the natural progress of things is for government to grow and liberty to yield, what good is it to change a few minds? Because government keeps growing. We keep losing that freedom. We have to change the majority of minds. And then Jefferson had some advice about it. There has to be a revolution. He, he actually literally leaned toward a violent revolution, which I do not. There has to be a revolution. It has to be intellectual. It has to be nonviolent. It has to be energized. The young people have to be involved. And I think we're there. I think we're in the middle of it. And I think that what has happened... Why? Why do you think we're in the middle of it? We've got more people. Well, because right now it's actually affecting Washington. I mean, just think of this uh, recent vote uh, that didn't happen on Syria. And it was Republicans and Democrats grassroots going to their members and saying, no more war. At the same time, the leadership in the House uh, and the Senate, Republican and Democrat, they were all for it. And they're all for the Fed. So the grassroots got together. You know, I don't like this idea where we have to compromise, you know, and raise taxes and do this and that with the leadership. What we want is a coalition of people who call themselves libertarian conservatives with the progressive Democrats who are principled and they don't play.